This lecture is going to be all about using the timeline in Camtasia Studio. So when you open up a file or a project, you'll see it pop up in the clip bin and you'll also see it pop up down here on the timeline. Now the timeline basically consists of tracks that hold different media. So let me just expand this up so we can see the entire timeline with all the tracks on it. This one has three tracks. The main track one here has the bulk of the audio and video, basically just from a screen capture that I created using the record features on Camtasia Studio. The second track has some callouts, and if I hover over those callouts, you'll see it's just these little red circles. And then the third track actually only has one call out. So generally I try to use as few tracks as possible because it makes it easier to manage. Because each track takes up some space visually when you're trying to edit it. As far as using and navigating through the timeline, obviously you have this slider here which you can use to move sideways along the track. You have a slider here if you have a lot of tracks stacked vertically then you can move up and down. You have a time strip up here that shows you where you are in the track. So for instance, if I click right here, it'll move the arrow to that spot and you can see that that particular spot is at one minute and 10 seconds into the video. There's also a timer up here. So it shows you that this is a six minute, 57 second long video. And I'm currently looking at the video at one minute and 16 seconds, which is right here. Now this little arrow is very important and I've talked about it a little bit already but I'm going to go into it some more because you can just grab it by left clicking on it and you can drag it back and forth which is a great way to just kind of get an overview of your video or to navigate to different parts of your video to work on editing. And then you'll notice these red and green little dots on the side of it and these are also very important because if you grab one of them and drag it what you're doing is you're highlighting a segment of your video and you can highlight as much or as little as you want you can highlight one word or one segment or you can highlight half of your video if you want and when you do that you're then able to edit that particular section specifically without affecting all of this over here that you haven't highlighted. And this is particularly true when it comes to audio. So if I want to turn the, the volume up on just this section that I have highlighted in blue, then I can click the volume up button and you'll see it start to move up. Now of course I don't actually want that so I'm going to undo that. But you can affect the volume that way over any selected section of your video. Also, if you want to cut that section out, you use these scissors here, and if I click cut, it'll remove that entire section of the video and just drop the cursor or the arrow to wherever it cut it out. Now, of course, I'm going to undo that as well because I don't want to cut that out of my video. Now, once you're finished working on a specific spot in your video, you can double left click on this timeline and it will just put your cursor back and unselect, unhighlight the section that you're working on. So now you're back to being able to just move freely throughout the video. Now a couple of other things, as you hit play, you'll see that that starts to move through the video and I have it muted right now so it won't, I won't be talking over myself, but you can see that it's moving through the video and then of course up in the video screen you can see what's actually happening and then you can pause it and it'll stop wherever you want to be. Now just a couple of other things as far as manipulating the timeline here. This is a really important feature here, the zoom. If you click on the zoom out, it's gonna actually zoom out on the timeline so that you can see more of the timeline on the screen. So you can see if I zoom out to there, my entire video, all six and a half, almost seven minutes of it, are visible on the screen. Obviously though, if I were going to go in and try and edit one of these little words in here, it would be very difficult for me to highlight and select that to edit it. So at that point, I would want to pick where I wanted to work on the video. If I want to work right here, then I would want to zoom in on that section. And you'll notice how the spot that I've selected is centered 
and everything else pushes out to the sides. And I can zoom all the way in really far to where it only has a, a few seconds of video. In fact, it's like three and a half seconds of video in my entire screen. And so at this point, it's very easy to select even just one word, or sometimes you can select even just one syllable. Or for instance, if this was a little cough that I did, or just a, a sharp breath in, and I wanted to silence that, I could silence it, or I could cut that section out, but I can do anything that I want at that point. Now again, once you need to see more of the video, so if I want to see what's happening six minutes down the way, it's kind of inconvenient to scroll like this. So instead I would zoom out a whole bunch so I can see what's up there and then I can move over to here, zoom back in if I want and work on a different section. Okay, so, and then finally, you can use this zoom, which I don't use very often, but if you want to expand the width of these tracks or the height of these tracks so you can see a little better what's going on, you can do that. Generally speaking though, there's not much more detail that you want to see, so I usually leave this somewhere about right there, just so I can see the big picture. And then again, of course, you'll usually have this condensed down so you can see your video up there, and then you can just scroll down to the track that you need to look at, and it works just fine. And finally, let me expand this back out a little bit so you can see, let's say that I only want to edit this second track, or I only want to work on this particular piece. What you can do here is lock the other tracks, and what that does is it prevents you from doing any editing on those tracks. So if I go here and I highlight this section of the video, and I click Cut, it's only going to cut this center track. So it's really only going to cut out this call out, which is a, another just red square to highlight this. And it will cut that out and all the rest of this timeline on this track two will slide over to here. Now that can be very effective if, for instance, you have audio on the top track and audio on the bottom track but you only want the audio on the top track to show up and you want to silence the audio on the bottom track then you can just lock the top track so you're not silencing any of that audio and then you have this highlighted and you click silence and see how it drops the all the blips down to nothing so I just silenced that bottom track and then if there was audio on here, that's all that you would hear. Of course, again, I'm gonna undo that because I don't want to do that. But that's the purpose of being able to lock different tracks. You do have to be careful about locking one track and cutting a section of video on another track because if this slides over here after I cut it, and it's supposed to be lined up with media on this track, then they're not gonna line up anymore. This is particularly problematic if you have your video on this bottom line and your audio on the top line, and you cut a section of your video out, then it's not gonna match up with the audio anymore. So that's just something you have to be very careful about. Generally speaking, if you're gonna cut a section of video out, you do want to cut all of the media involved. And then another one that I use less frequently is this. And this just disables content. If this is enabled and I do this, you'll see this call out up there, the red circle, right? But if I disable that, then as I play through that, that track isn't doing anything now, so you don't see that call out. And that's just helpful for situations where you have a lot going on, a lot of call outs or layers or images video, music, audio, all these things, and you need to hear one thing or see one thing and kind of isolate it. So it's a good way to just sort things out. Because if you get a lot of different things like this going on, it can get a little confusing at times. But always be sure to turn this back on when you're finished. And then a final thing is that all of these items that are on the timeline can be moved. Like, so let's say I wanna get rid of track three, I can grab this plop it down here onto this track and I can right click and I can either say remove track 
or I can say remove all empty tracks and any empty track is going to disappear. So that just simplified my life a little bit and got rid of track 3 because it only had one call out on it which is sort of a waste. You can also move these side to side so you just grab it by left clicking on it and you can just drag it really easily like that. I can even bring it over here by continuing to drag through this and see it just pops over to there and if I try and push it off the side then it'll move the timeline so you can see it's just kind of moving wherever it wants and then it has like a smart feature where if I get it near this other one then it'll sort of snap together and you'll see that little yellow line and that helps you to line up media and it prevents you from getting a lot of gaps and stuff like that although if you want to move this in close like that without it snapping then what you have to do is you have to zoom in a bit and then you can grab it and slide it away a little bit. It gives you a little bit finer control over it. But that snap is nice because it just helps you line things up. And I'm gonna undo this again to put it back where it belonged. But those are just a few tricks for manipulating things and moving things around on the timeline.